Imagine a digital Jamaican dollar. Well, that could soon become a reality as the Bank of Jamaica has invited providers to develop and test a central bank digital currency or CBDC for short. But how is this different from cryptocurrency and how will it affect you and your money? I'm Kalila Reynolds and it's time for another episode of Money Mondays JA brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to this channel and turn on those post notifications. Also subscribe to our newsletter by clicking the link in the description below. I've got a t-shirt giveaway coming up, so make sure you watch this video to the end. Earlier this year, the Bank of Jamaica announced that it would be willing to consider the use of a central bank digital currency, or CBDC. Then in July, the bank formally invited CBDC providers to develop and test potential digital Jamaican dollars. Now, this is exciting news because it means that Jamaica could have its own version of a digital currency, which would provide several benefits. But before we go any further, let me explain what CBDC is. It's not complicated at all. So central bank digital currency is a form of virtual money established by a country's central bank to be legal tender in that country. When you hear virtual money, you probably think cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. But central bank digital currencies are actually not the same as cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are not issued by any central authority in a country, which means that they're not subject to government control or regulations. They essentially offer an alternative way of storing money and making payments without relying on traditional banking. Fun fact, Bitcoin, which was the original blockchain-based cryptocurrency established back in 2009, was born after the Great Recession when people started having less trust in the traditional banking system. So now that we're in another really great recession, here comes another opportunity for digital currency. CBDC, though, is different from cryptocurrency because it's issued by a country's central bank, and this makes it legal tender that's governed by the same laws that apply to traditional physical money. So it's exactly the same as the dollars in your wallet, but online. It can be exchanged dollar for dollar with physical cash. So let's say I have a $5,000 bill that I've deposited into a digital currency account. I would still have $5,000 just in virtual form. You with me so far? All right, good. So countries started considering the need for CBDCs after cryptocurrencies began gaining popularity and value. Just look at Bitcoin, for instance. Back in 2009, 10,000 Bitcoins were worth around 30 US dollars. As of August 28, 2020, just one Bitcoin is worth 11,443 US dollars. And there are some 5,000 different cryptocurrencies out there, a far cry from when Bitcoin was the only kid on the block. But there are other reasons countries have taken an interest in CBDCs. For one, they would ensure that the public has access to legal tender if for some reason physical cash were no longer widely available because it would be recognized legally as a form of payment. Economists also note that the use of physical cash is steadily decreasing as it gets easier to use cards and apps to make payments. So while a central bank may not remove physical money as a payment option, it may just become less and less popular. Another reason is that cash can be difficult to trace, which increases the risk of tax evasion, money laundering, and other illegal transactions. Anything based in technology comes with its own set of risks, but the design of CBDCs make it easier to track and make receipts of transactions. There's also the security risk involved in transporting cash and making payments, which online transactions would eliminate. In the BOJ statement, they noted that for deposit-taking institutions, CBDC presents an opportunity to improve cash management and costs. So it's clear that there's a lot of appeal in having a digital Jamaican dollar, and the idea is already being explored right here in the Caribbean. 
In 2019, Barbados-based fintech company Bit helped develop the country's CBDC M Money. I spoke with the founder of Bit, Gabriel Abed, in June of last year, and he explained how Barbadians were able to use M Money to conduct everyday transactions. And we uh, turned around and invented uh, what I believe to be one of the more disruptive maneuvers of the fiat industry. Which is? Uh, central bank digital currencies. And that's the ability. The one that was announced earlier this year. Yes, through the good work of the team at BIT, um, they were able to successfully uh, deliver an active product in the market of Barbados called M Money. It allows you to send and receive digital dollars. I can pay for my coffee or my chicken leg uh, using my smartphone, or I can receive a payment from a friend in a neighboring uh, house or across the island um, in another part and I can do this all for uh, free as a consumer. Barbadians can also pay their utility bills, so having a trusted, workable digital dollar can be done. And while it's not quite ready, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank also signed an agreement with BIT in February of 2019 to begin developing a digital version of the Eastern Caribbean, or the EC dollar. So should Jamaica create a digital version of our dollar? What would it mean for you and your money? Now, according to the BOJ, should a viable solution be adopted and introduced, one of the benefits would be greater financial inclusion, meaning more people would be included in the financial system. More people would have access to useful and affordable financial services. The BOJ also mentioned the country's transition to a digital economy, which would allow consumers to make and receive payments anytime, any place, using any convenient device. The central bank noted that it would continue to issue banknotes and coins to facilitate all economic activities. Now we'll have to wait on an update from the BOJ about the development and testing of the potential CBDC solutions. That's it for this week's Money Mondays JA, brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. Follow them on social media at We Are Proven and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Kalila Ray. Here's what's coming up on Taking Stock. The PNP and JLP are making their final attempts to win your vote as September 3 fast approaches. The PNP is promising light bill subsidies and rent to own homes, while the JLP is promising billions in grants and loans to MSMEs. We'll examine their economic policies with news editor at Television Jamaica Dashon Hendricks and financial analyst and contributor to finance Twitter JA Mark Gale. And later, the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. The Bank of Jamaica now says they expect the economy to contract by as much as 10% this year, and Derriman Trading Company is planning an additional public offer APO. We'll discuss. Now, hit that thumbs up button so that YouTube shows this video to more people. Subscribe to this channel and to learn more each week. And if you've learned anything useful today, share with a friend. Congratulations to last week's t-shirt winner, Theon Sims. You've won yourself one of our Get This Money t-shirts. Email orders at kalilaraymedia.com to claim your prize. Guys, if you want one, just email that address to place your order. And time now for today's giveaway. Here's the question. What's the main difference between cryptocurrency and central bank digital currency, CBDC? Answer in the comments. You have until Friday, September 5 to post your answer. The winner will be chosen at random from the correct answers and announced in next week's episode. Until then, I'm Kalila Reynolds. Stay safe.